Hi, I'm Phoenix Perry, um, and I make games. Um, okay. Oh, is this my clicker? Woo. Yay, clicker. All right. Um, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about what it's like to make games as a woman and my experience. And if I have time, I'll tell you a little bit about my work. But what I have to talk about I think is so important that I need to jump straight to it. So one of the things that I've learned is that women make up a mere 4% of game programmers. Women make her up around 25% of programmers overall, right? So you might be thinking, eh, it's not so bad, 25%. Wrong. <laughs> Absolutely wrong. In fact, the truth is now it's worse than it's ever been before. Check out this. That's the chart since the 80s. Look what's happening to women in development. It's falling. And if you look just, that was the whole field of computation. If you strip it back to just the programmers, what you have is that in 1987, 42% of programmers were women in America. Programming even started out as being considered something that women did. I would like you to just take a gander at Cosmopolitan in the 60s. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> So it was basically one of these things that women were encouraged into the field because it was seen as secretarial. So what happened is women were saying things, well, like, if it doesn't sound like women's work, well, it just is. So women were even considered compute hers. It's part of, of the idea here. And it was, <laughs> I think this is funny, what you have up there is the computer room during a war effort. Um, and women were considered part of this process, and it was a lot of low-level data entry and computation. And these jobs were largely reserved for women, which is really interesting to me. So why this dramatic switch? Okay, this is my research, and it was shocking. The personal computer and all of the advertising that came right along with it. So basically, it was an expensive item, right, the personal computer. So who are we going to target it at? Are we going to target it at the women? No, we're going to target it to the men who can afford to buy it. Computers suddenly became not for women. Let's take a look at some of the ads. <laughs> Over here, we have Apple. Ooh, we love Apple, right? No, they ran an entire campaign about men and computers. And this one is, we're looking for the most original use of Apple since Adam. Over here, we have one from my favorite folks here, Commodore. We have, who's keeping up with Commodore? Where are the women? In the back by the pool. What have we got over here? We have a man, if you can see it in the corner there from Sinclair, teaching his son how to program. Over here, we have the TRS-80, a personal favorite of mine. And uh, you'll see that who's, who's programming this? Dude. What kind of man owns his own computer? I don't know, apparently one that doesn't like girls. All right, so check this out. Our server, you know, won't go down on you, neither will she. Hey, awesome. <laughs> so this is a kind of, <laughs> this is for real. <laughs> I didn't even have to try that hard on Google. <laughs> so I just want you to take a gander at what this did. This was women, this was Gen Xers and Gen Y little girls growing up with this in their faces. So what we have is as advertising ramped up in gaming in the 90s, gaming was depicted as something only little boys did, and the ads turned either male-dominated or extremely misogynistic. Here's what we get here. We get a shooter, not so bad, right? Except for look at like the role of motherhood going on in here. Frightening. All right, here's another one, little boy playing this. Here's another one, we've got a naked woman here, and it's like, oh, you may have noticed there was a naked woman in this picture. Whoa, this is for, Saturn, uh, for Sega Saturn, advertising the 32-bit processor. Here we have this one. I don't know how this got past anybody. What is this? <laughs> this was a game that came out, and this was the actual print ad they ran in game magazines. All right, but here's the problem. Women make up nearly half of gamers. Even with all this noise, we're still half the audience. And this year, I was at the Game Developers Conference, and PlayStation took me. And I was standing in the PlayStation booth showing off my new game, which will be out soon. Buy it. It's called Crystalon. And I got constantly, and this was my first time at the GDC, because normally I make these weirdo art games that I play like in big 
open fields and they're like all these fun games where I hack at hardware and whatever. But this was my first, and it was almost by accident, PlayStation reached out to, to 12 developers in New York and asked them to do prototypes, and I was one of the people they took to the GDC. First actual video game, if you'd have told me I was gonna make a console game, I would have laughed at you, but somehow it happened. And all of a sudden I find myself in the actual games community. And I got asked constantly by men, is there somebody who could tell me about your game? And I was like, oh no, you did not. <laughs> And this just went on and on. And I was like, what is happening? And all of a sudden I turned around and it was booth babes everywhere. And the, the atmosphere was super male dominated. And then I realized with the Vita, the console I had just made a game for, I saw their print ads. <laughs> this is real people, this is real. <laughs> this actually ran. <laughs> So what we have here is an image problem. We don't have a STEM problem. We don't have a problem with women just dropping out of computer science. We have an image problem. What do we do? We need to undo the damage. How do we do that? We woman up. This is my new project. It's called the Code Liberation Foundation. And it is a community for female game developers. And all we're doing is offering free education to women who want to learn and create together. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we give each other free classes, both online and in person. We meet and we play and we talk about games. And we function like a mesh network. And we're just getting started. This summer, we ran 33 hours of free C++ game development to over 80 some, I think 83 women. Our anonymous feedback results. The CLF is a precious gem that is embedded with the promise to change the ratio of tech in the industry. I do not have a background and usually feel intimidated by coding. This environment was comfortable for me to learn in. I'm working on stepping out of the shadow of my male peers and deeply appreciate having a supportive circle of women around me. You exposed us, and this is my favorite, I'm just gonna do the voice. You exposed us to the power of programming. It shall spread through our bodies at, like radiation and mutate us into programmers. <laughs> Join us and change the game. Because game development can look like this. Hello world, um, and I am a programmer. That's our shirt. So if you want to have a chapter in your own town, start one, and we'll hook you into our network in New York. And you can join our army. Ladies only, though. Sorry. <laughs> so this is our website. Look us up. That's us on Twitter. And hello at codeliberation.org. Thanks, guys.